Welcome to lesson three. Uh, tonight we're going to create a function to model a situation and use the function to answer questions. Um, sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. Uh, thankfully, we're going to be looking at real world situations, and so we can use um, what we know about the real world to help us make smart decisions as far as um, creating a new function. All right, so here is your think about a problem. Go ahead and copy this down. Uh, spend at least uh, five minutes going through understanding the problem, planning, solving, and making sure your answer makes sense. Show all your work, and then we'll go through it um, quickly and, and talk about it. Okay, I'm sure that went very well. Here is the understanding part, right? There's a couple of key pieces of information. How much do you make and how much does it cost? And then what we're trying to figure out is the break-even point. And so interpreting that is important. You break even when the amount you make is equal to the amount you spend. And, and another way of interpreting that is when the amount you make minus the amount you spend is going to be equal to zero, right? Then you've broken even. And so now that we understand the problem, we want to kind of come up with a plan to actually figure this out. And here, the plan is kind of the, the important part. How will I figure out when this happens, the number of cups that will make this happen? Well, I can write an expression in terms of the cost of one cup that will tell me how much I make, right? Each cup will make me two dollars. So the amount that I make is going to be equal to, is given by two times the number of cups that I sell. And we'll just call that C. And the amount that we spend, well, that's going to be a dollar and ten cents times the number of cups you sell, plus this fifty dollars that just kind of is you have to spend that because that's your equipment. And so now we can set up an equation where we have the amount we make minus the amount we spend, and we set it equal to zero, and we solve for the number of cups. Now, be careful, we're subtracting all of this. So it's in parentheses 1.10 times C plus 50, and that needs to equal 0. So now we can go through and solve, and the only sort of tricky thing is that we make sure we distribute the negative inside, so we can rewrite this as 2 times C minus 1.10 times C minus 50, right? We're subtracting this whole piece so each part of these, each of these needs to be subtracted from what we make. Alright, and now we can go through and solve. So when I go through and solve, and here are the steps, so you can go through them yourself, make sure that you have your work done. We get 55.56 cups, and sure that sounds great, and if we think about it, it kind of makes sense, except you really can't sell half a cup, so if you sold only 55, Apparently, you wouldn't quite break even. Um, and if you sold 56, well, you'd make a little more. So in your answer, you'd want to make sure that you know you can't actually break even. You can either make just a very little amount of money by selling 56 cups, or you could lose uh, just a little bit of money by selling 55 cups. OK, so let's think about now what did we learn from this situation? And there are a couple of key things. And the first is that we can represent the amount of money that we're making with an expression like this. And this is what's called the profit, right? The amount that you end up walking away with is known as the profit. And the way that you find that is by taking the amount you're making, which is also known as the revenue, and subtracting away the amount you're spending, which is known as the cost. Okay, and so we'll, we'll write all this information down. This is kind of common sense. And the big important idea is that we can write a, an equation or a function for the profit by combining these two ideas. 
and then we can set it equal to zero and solve and do a bunch of different things and we can utilize some of the information uh, and techniques that we have with quadratics for whenever these involve a quadratic function. All right, so here's some vocabulary that we talked about. Revenue is going to be equal to the price times the quantity. In other words, this is the price that that one thing sells of, and this is the number of things that you sell. So you might want to mark that down, make a note of that. Profit, the amount you walk away with or take home, is whatever the revenue is, right, the total amount that you're bringing in, minus the cost or the amount that you spend. Okay, and this was the what we wrote uh, an equation for in the last in that example, right? We had the amount we were making minus the cost, and that was the profit, right? And you break even when your profit's zero, when you walk away with nothing. So the key idea that we have here is that given information about the revenue, how much you make, and the cost, how much you spend, in function form, so in other words, some sort of function, we can create a new function for the profit by subtracting the cost from the revenue as we see up here. Okay? And the kind of important thing to note is that revenue is price times the quantity. Well, what's the cost usually? The cost, there's usually some cost to make each one of these. So both the revenue and the cost usually depend on the quantity. Okay? And so that's an important piece to note. The revenue and the cost usually depend on the number you sell or the number you make. And so that allows us to write this function. Okay? And so we'll get some practice with this. Most of it is common sense, and really we just need to make sure that we write down all of the different pieces we know, have a good understanding step, and then combine them in the right way. All right, so here's a problem for um, us to try out. Uh, the problem goes as follows. Yancey is teaching a salsa dance class to save money for his first car. His revenue, R, is given by the function R equals negative X squared minus 50X, where X is the price per class. Currently, his only expense is advertising on Instagram, which is costing him $132. Uh, apparently, followers aren't cheap. So we want to write a profit function for Yancey in terms of X, and then we find out that Yancey wants to hire Shelby as an assistant teacher. Shelby will charge based on the price of the class according to the expression 6X minus 14, and so we want to write a new profit function for Yancey after he hires Shelby. And then we want to know at what price will Yancey make the most money, and at what prices will Yancey break even? So you're going to copy this down um, and try this on your own. I'm going to give you a couple of hints in a few seconds here to kind of get you started. But give this a start fresh on your own and then go ahead and listen to the couple hints and, and then maybe that will allow you to keep going. But you should have attempted to answer at least each one of these and make sure that you are understanding, planning, solving, and checking. Okay, hopefully that first run went well. Just thinking through the understanding piece, I know that I have a, a function that gives me the revenue, and I also know some parts of what he's, it's costing him to teach his salsa dance class. Um, and so I can just use that, ex, that relationship that we just talked about for a profit, where we know the profit is the revenue minus the cost. And so we can go ahead and write a pretty simple um, profit function in part A. And, and that same idea will really apply to part B as well. And part C and D requires us to combine some of the techniques we've uh, talked about the past couple of days um, to further analyze the situation and hopefully give Yancey some, some helpful tips on when he'll make the most money. Okay, so go ahead and spend you know, maybe 10 or 15 more minutes giving that a try. Um, have evidence that you've tried each problem. So maybe write down your plan and give it a chance to, to solve it. Um, if you're you know, not able to get all the way through, um, right? make sure that you have a question ready to go um, 
as far as, you know, I didn't know what to do here, I tried this, um, I didn't understand what this represented, so on and so forth. But certainly make sure that you're coming into class either with completed solutions or with some questions.